Now you'll perform your vector analysis. One of the first analyses Dr. Snow performed on the August 1854 cholera outbreak was defining straight line, least distance service areas for each public water pump. You'll perform a similar analysis using ArcGIS Online Geoanalytics cloud-based geoprocessing to perform a location allocation analysis to allocate each death to the closest pump using walk time. So let's begin our vector analysis from the catalog pane by double-clicking and opening our vector analysis map view and expanding our geodatabase so that we can see the results in our geodatabase. I'm going to go ahead and click on the analysis ribbon and in the workflows group, click on the network analysis drop down button. And I'm going to click on location allocation. This creates a new analysis layer that's reflected in the catalog pane in our project geo database if we refresh it. We can see the location allocation solver feature data set and associated feature classes, as well as in our contents pane where we can see the location allocation group layer and associated feature layers. Now I'm going to select the location allocation group layer and then activate the context sensitive location allocation layer ribbon. And this is where we're going to set up the parameters to run our location allocation analysis. And we'll start with the input data. So in the input data group, I'm going to click on the import facilities. And the facilities are going to be the water pumps. And the demand points are going to be the deaths that we're going to allocate to each of the water pumps. So I'm going to click on import facilities. That opens the add locations window. I'm going to accept all the defaults except for the input locations. So I'm going to click on the drop down and select pumps. Go ahead and click OK. And you'll see the pumps are added to the facilities feature layer in our map view. Now in the input data group, I'm going to click on input demand points. And in the add locations window, again, I'm going to accept all the defaults. Click on the input locations drop down and select deaths. Go ahead and click OK. And that imports my deaths into the demand points feature layer. Now I'm going to set the travel settings. My mode is going to be walking time. My direction is going to be from the residence to the water pumps or towards the facilities. The number of facilities is going to be 11. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to 11. There are actually 13 pumps but walk times to the Oxford Market and Seville Row water pumps are too far to be included in this analysis. So we'll just go with the 11 closest facilities or water pumps. And then now under the analysis group, I'm going to click on estimate credits. You don't have to, but I want to show you that when you run geoprocessing online, it actually uses credits. You have plenty of credits as an ACCGI student, so just click OK. And then now we're going to click run. And you can see this opens up the geoprocessing history pane where we can see that it's solving our location allocation analysis. ArcGIS Pro Desktop sent the data and parameters to ArcGIS Online, which ran a cloud geoprocess and sent the results back to our ArcGIS Pro Desktop project geodatabase. And that's reflected in our feature layers in our contents pane. And so we're just interested in the allocation lines. So in the contents pane, I'm going to select and right click the allocation lines feature layer and select data and export features. And in the export features window for output feature class, we're going to save it in our project geo database as pumps underscore allocation. Go ahead and click OK. And that's going to create a copy of the lines as the pumps allocation feature class in our project geo database. And of course, it's going to load as a feature layer in our contents pane as well. So now we can remove the location allocation group layer by selecting right clicking the layer and selecting remove. I'm going to update the symbology for the pumps allocation layer by clicking on the symbol patch. Set the color using the eyedropper tool 
to the same color as my water pumps and then push the line width back on the visual hierarchy by setting it to 0 0.2. That looks a lot better. Go ahead and close the symbology pane and close the geoprocessing history. Now in the ghost map project geo database, I want to right click on the location allocation solver and delete the feature data set. Now let's open the pumps allocation attribute table. And if you look in the table view, there's a name field and if I expand it, you can see that each allocation line ties back to a street and pump. In this case, we can scroll down and find Broad Street. There it is right there. And we can use on the map ribbon in the selection group, the select by attributes tool to select in the pumps allocation table, create a new selection with an expression where the name field in this case, we're not going to use is equal to. We're going to use ends with. And the value we're going to type in is Broad Street. And go ahead and click OK. And that creates a selection of features in our map view and records in our table view. And you can see it's selected 183 out of 321 records. That's 183 locations. It's not 183 deaths. We need to select the records in the deaths fields that are related to the allocation line. So we can do that using the select by location tool. So again, on the map ribbon in the selection group, I'm going to click on select by location. This time in my input features, I'm going to select deaths and intersect for the spatial relationship works and my selecting features are going to be pumps allocation. You can see it is going to only use the selected record. So I'll click OK. And that selects the features and records in the deaths feature layer. So I'm going to open up the attribute table. And again, it's the same number, 183 of 321, but that's the locations. And we want the count of selected records, which would be the number of deaths allocated to the Broad Street pump. So if I right click on the count field in the desk table view and select explore statistics, that opens up the data engineering window where we can explore the statistics for the count field for the selected records, including the sum of values in the count field. So how many total deaths are allocated to the Broad Street pump? Are there more deaths within closest walking time to the Broad Street pump than the other pumps? And why is this relevant? Note your answer to these questions and include them in your executive summary and map deliverable. I'm going to go ahead and close my table views, clear my selected records, reset my interface, and save my ArcGIS Pro project. Next, you'll perform raster analysis using kernel density. So over in the catalog pane, I'm going to duplicate the base map map view and rename base map 1 as raster analysis. Go ahead and open up the raster analysis map view. And then I'm going to activate the analysis ribbon. And in the tools gallery, click on the drop down. And under analyze patterns, I'm going to click on the kernel density geoprocessing tool. And so I want you to perform the raster and the geostatistical analysis on your own. I'm going to advance the video and I'll pick up with you at the end to wrap up this summary task. All right, so at this point, I've completed both my raster and geostatistical analysis. My geostatistical analysis included directional distribution and mean center. And I can see the resulting feature classes in my geo database, along with the results from my raster analysis, the death density raster data set. I'm going to go ahead and close the geoprocessing pane. And I want to improve the cartographic presentation of my results. So I'm going to click on my death ellipse symbol patch and change the fill color maybe to um, solar yellow, the outline color to no color. And it covers up my base map. So I'm going to activate the feature layer ribbon and in the transparency group, 
set the transparency so I can see the underlying base map as well. All right, that looks good. I want to update the symbology for my death mean center, so I'm going to click on the symbol patch. Click on the gallery panel in the symbol pane, and then scroll down and find maybe, how about star 3. I need to update the properties for my symbol. I can't really see it in the middle of my map there. So I'm going to click on the properties panel and change my color to be solar yellow. So it's visually associated with my ellipse and then increase the point size till I can see it in my map view. All right. That's a nice visual hierarchy. I like that. Go ahead and close the symbology pane. So which pump and how many deaths fall within one standard deviation of the mean center? How far is the mean center from the Broad Street pump? Note your answer to these questions to include in your executive summary and map deliverable. Now let's review the results from the raster analysis. Activate the raster analysis map view. Let's update the symbology. So I'm going to right click on the death density raster layer and select symbology. I want to change the number of decimals in my legend reduce them to make them a little bit more intuitive. And I also want to make the layer transparent. So on the raster layer ribbon, I'm going to change the transparency so that I can see both the data and the underlying base map. Now that looks pretty good. Go ahead and close the symbology pane. Now, what is the approximate deaths per hectare around the Broad Street pump? Be sure to note your answer and include it in your executive summary and map deliverable. Let's go ahead and reset our interface. Save our ArcGIS Pro project. This completes our analysis. Now we're ready to create our project deliverables.